Okay, finally. <laughs> so I find it funny to start from a post that was, uh, that was posted in, uh, on the Ask site uh, one year ago. The question was, uh, where are the Scriptforce libraries located on my system? And uh, the right answer was, well, you would just have to install 7.1. And so upgrade from 7.0 to 7.1. And the solution was uh, chosen as being, well, ScriptForge is a scam, do not use it. It was not a very friendly, <laughs> from my view, point of view. And coming from a guy I have enormous uh, respect for because uh, uh, he helped me very often, in fact, uh, by his advice on the forums. Um, so I started from, from there, and so my conclusion was there is a big misunderstanding. ScriptForge has never been designed or conceived as the enemy or the replacement or the arrival of, you know, not at all. They are complementary. But we must be aware that end users today, when they want to be able to script, they have well, the next duality, either they can record the macro, you know what it is, and you know also that what is recorded and what, what, is, uh, what you obtain as a result is completely not reusable. And on the other side, you have an enormous API what does everything, uh, but when people ask, where should I start? Well, the, 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 the answer on, on forums is uh, mainly, well, you have nice books to read. They are good starting points. This was a bit, a bit short, and our conviction was that we had to do something for that. And we, okay, developed a number of things that are now available as standard in uh, LibreOffice. Being aware that the target audience are not the people who could speak you know before they could they could walk. Um, the, we have today uh, we face a population of, of users. We must be aware that uh, the competition, uh, in, uh, which name Microsoft today, offers to make scripts a very good IDE, an excellent IDE, a very nice object model, easy, concrete, not abstract model, not abstract objects, no, what is a service manager, what is a, a component context, these are concepts that you may ignore in, uh, uh, in your script with Microsoft, in fact. And Microsoft could convince uh, with uh, uh, his tools, millions of people, millions of end users, I say millions, to start scripting and to make things with scripts, uh, to make them automated. And this is very remarkable. We are, I'm, I, I believe, very, very far from that situation. So what uh, ScriptForge involves is, uh, first of all, a common API, because it's still an API, but a common API for BASIC and Python. We uh, encourage the use of object-oriented programming also in BASIC. It's, of course, natural in Python. It's also, uh, a, a, it contains also libraries that extend BASIC and also that extend Python. We will see in summary, what, 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 what they are. It's simple to use, yes, it's simple to use. It's not against, you know, we will see that uh, it's really the case. It's uh, more user-friendly and it's also a la carte in the sense that you are not obliged at all to use only ScriptForge or uh, to dedicate all your scripts within the framework of ScriptForge. You can really mix everything together. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It's also inspired by use cases. The, the point of view is not to have, uh, well, developers that have managed that uh, the, the, the development of the, the technology of LibreOffice can be described with uh, a UNO API. The, the, view of the point of view is really the user. And use, use cases mean user benefits. 
So we started really reasoning from use cases. So the idea is not here to detail the use, use case that you see here. It's just a, a sample of what uh, ScriptForge can do, but it just shows that there is abundance of ideas. Well, users need once or several times they need to do something. How do they start? Okay, I said um, there is a number of services that are extensions of BASIC. BASIC is too low, is far from what VBA offers, well, in a certain sense. And uh, so we, we decided also to start, in fact, with the development of a number of services that really extend the language. So you have uh, here, for instance, for the array service, it's not available for Python. It's nonsense to make it in Python. Python has already all these data structures. Well, yeah, so you, you just can sort arrays or uh, make sets, uh, the def define the union of two arrays, whatever. These are kind of things that are directly available with the API of ScriptForge. Same ID. This time for the string service, the string service you have built in in basic a number of things that allow you to, to, to let's say, find a string, a substring within a string. But if you start talking about how do I find a regular expression within a string, it's something else. Well, we were convinced that it was necessary to have, to have for uh, input validation to, to pass a number of strings to be able to import, let's say, a CSV file, that, that kind of things you have, you need, well, a number of primitives, and these primitives are, you have here a sample of what uh, is available, uh, including, for instance, last one, hashing a string. Well, we use Python to hash, it's a module in Python that is available with LibreOffice. Well, we use it to to produce the hash code of uh, a string of, or of a file. And uh, the third uh, kind of service also available only for BASIC is uh, a mapping class that is more than collections. And know that uh, Microsoft did exactly the same. So they have also a dictionary mapping class that is a superset of uh, the collection class. Um, that was for basic, for Python, well, the idea was um, when, when you start as a new script author to write some Python code for LibreOffice, well, um, there is, there is a, a, a some, a some step that we could cover here by saying, well, basic offers the integration between basic and LibreOffice, which is better than between Python and LibreOffice. And that, integrates, that integration goes for, for as an example, through a create UNO service primitive. Well, the idea was, well, let's make the same. But let's make it so that the primitive in Python calls the basic primitive, which returns then back the value that was found with that, uh, after, the, after the call. And we made it for a number of uh, primitives that are available built in in BASIC so that the step going from BASIC when I know BASIC going to Python and starting scripting for LibreOffice is easy. That step is really easy and you have here the list of the, the, the functions that are made available. Some, many of them are written in BASIC in fact in background, not all of them, some are directly in Python or uh, something else. But this makes, for instance, that we are able to have a user interface, let's say through message box, that is exactly identical in Python and in basic, that you have scripts that mix both. Well, you just have to, to call the same message box function, in fact, from basic or from Python. It's really identical. I said it, uh, it's not a UNO killer, it's uh, ScriptForge is in fact a UNO enabler. We will see examples also later. Well, you, we, um, there exist within 
the items that are manipulated with script forge, a number of objects that are UN objects. And this makes that we have with uh, this, this style of scripting here, shortcuts to you know. It's very easy to say, well, I start uh, with a calc service. You have the first statement there. I have a, an import range that is uh, uh, built by the import from a CSV file, just as an example there. And I have here, the X cell range variable is in fact produced by a shortcut from the script for calc service, producing, uh, producing a, a standard you know object. And so you can go further in the development of, of your script. For instance, it's script force does not provide any mean to format cells or cell ranges. Formatting a cell or a cell range is much too complicated to, do, to not to use you know for doing that. Well, you can so via shortcut go very fast to your target, here the cell range, and from there start, start and for instance by using X-ray in Python on your basic, whatever, and starting from there, going further and use really methods or uh, properties from UNO objects. So you have a huge list, that is, uh, you have a sample here, of a number of things that are available via shortcuts. And that's very important to understand that uh, both uh, work really together. Some nice features that I can show about ScriptForge and, and that will illustrate the, the philosophy of, of the things. For instance, here I have uh, two scripts, one in Python and one in basic, they do exactly the same. In the sense that they are events and they log the event and, the, and, the, and the, the, the go through that event, they log the event itself. And uh, they log it where? In what we call the console. And console is either a log file or is a dialog box that you can display in modal mode or in non-modal mode. And for instance here, uh, you, the events are triggered when the mouse scrolls over the vertical bar first and the horizontal bar afterwards. And you see you have events triggered by basic, events triggered by Python, and you have the console that lists the event at the time that it happens. So you see that the integration between both and the coexistence between Python Basic, you know, is, uh, is uh, excellent. Also, you have a number of, uh, of uh, helps that describe the context in which the, the script is running uh, about the platform, and a number of those uh, aspects are uh, f supplied by, by Python, but they are available in, Pi in Basic, I mean, here also, in the same way. Huh? Is, we, from now on, we do not make any distinction anymore between basic and Python. So you have a number of uh, descriptions of the context in which you work. And this is very important when you make an extension, for instance, you don't know in advance in which context the, 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 the extension will work. It's important to be able to, for instance, know, well, I want to know if extension X-ray is available on the system where I run my script. Well, you can ask the question with uh, the extension folder available in, uh, in file system or the list of extensions in platforms. So you are supported here uh, to, to have that uh, available at any time. ScriptForge is also international. You have a service that helps you make scripts that are independent. No, I, I say it otherwise. You can, you can supply a script which a number of language files that are separated from the scripts. This, are the, this is the principle and this is what we use uh, also in, for any translation in, within LibreOffice. Libre and you have also a region service that uh, uh, supports um, the calculation of uh, 
certain times or time offsets or that, that kind of things. Well, to, to just to answer the question, when it's uh, 12 o'clock <coughs> in Milan, what time is it in Tokyo? This is um, supported here, and it relies on you know, of course. So you know supports for, for doing that, but who knows that support as which end users knows that 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 uh, LibreOffice and you know have the necessary primitives to supply that kind of answers. It's not not obvious at all. Here, a number of uh, also nice features in Calc to also to illustrate the, the philosophy. A range in ScriptForge is a string. It's also a single range, but it's a string. And the string is what you find in formulas classically in, uh, in, uh, in, in calc, but extended with a number of placeholders that you can put in your range. You can put the tilt to say, well, it's the current selection. You can pull the star to say, well, it's the last cell of the sheet, of the row, of the, of the column. And OK, it's a string and with a number of extensions. So a number of methods have, also, of course, a range as a string as input. But many methods return a range also effectively as a string. And you have the list there, you have a number of, a, a huge number of methods that return also a range because in many cases, and this is a user point of view, the data comes from somewhere, you put it in, 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 a, in, a, in a data sheet, but you don't know the size of the data that you have in a sheet. So it's, you have many cases where the size is unpredictable. I just take a simple example here. I don't say that's the shortest way to do it, but let's say we, I have a, a matrix in columns B, C, and D. And what I want to do, but I don't know how many lines, or I don't know the width of, uh, of uh, my, uh, my area. I just know it starts in B2 and extends from there. And I want to have the sum of uh, all items row by row in the next available column. Well, I must be able. I must be able to. I must be able to uh, uh, construct my scripts step by step, but independently from the size. Well, it's possible thanks to the ID. Um, I. Uh, you have a number of primitives that return ranges, and you have here an example. And you have also, still on calc, as an extension of that, as I start from the same matrix, I, uh, I have also the concept of filters. They have nothing to do with calc filters. It's just the idea, I want to do something, but by selecting, by selecting either the rows, or the columns, or the cells, where I want them to be applied. Here the example, I want to keep only the rows where the last column does not contain a multiple of 10. Why? It's not important in C, but it's just the idea that you can just express with a calc formula. It's there. I say module 10 must not be zero. And the result is that the two rows containing 30 and 60 as uh, sum of the rows are removed. And the resulting range is what still exists in the sheet. OK, that gives a bit the, the, the reasoning uh, what, we, what we made on Calc. Here's something else about user interfaces. In dialogues, you may have uh, three controls. And they are very fine, they're very nice to display tabular data when the tabular data is sorted. Well, here, the example is how can I display in a tree control the content of the bibliography database, which is also shipped with LibreOffice as an example. And uh, well, we use first the database service below there in the gray in the gray rectangle. You see, I, ex I express just a select statement, and I do get rows. Get rows is very powerful because it does not depend on the type of fields, the number of fields, whatever. It just produces an array or a tuple of tuples. 
that is for the data expansion, and we provide a control service, a dialogue control service, which may be a tree control with a number of methods and properties, and some of them are typical for tree controls. And we, we can make that just by adding the full set of data in one statement at sub-tree while the, the tree is constructed, is built. We can do that statically or dynamically. If you click on, uh, on some node, you click on the expansion symbol, well, you can get the data, for instance, from the, from the database at that moment. We can make still in the user interface quite rapidly pop-up menus. And the idea is not to, to build the tree node by node like you want to do maybe, in, should do it in, uh, with you know. It's, it's much simpler than that. We just list the items like you see, just the, the, the full branch line by line and we can add, add uh, with uh, that uh, technique either item, normal item, or radio button, button or a checkbox. We just, the idea is just to list the items one by one. This makes that when you have to update your pop-up menu, it's much easier. But it's, it's quite straightforward for a user to write this one. Same for menus. For, of course, there is a main difference, a menu, well, when it must be clicked to be activated. The pop-up menu, pop menu, you activate the menu as a whole, while, and then you can wait for the answer. While for a menu, well, the menu stays there for forever, up to its deletion, and you can wait for the execution of some item in the menu, and that is uh, executed with the definition of just um, uh, an event that can be triggered here, but these are not standard events. These are events that are uh, managed by ScriptForge, uh, by ScriptForge in the background. Here, I want to give a rapidly a full example. The question is, I want to have a dialogue displaying the actual data in the form of a chart. In, in the dialogue, so today um, you, you cannot make that easily. So I start with the definition of number of initializations. This is the full, the full script, eh? so you will see it's 18 lines as a whole, and I start with the import statement in Python. I just define in advance that I will use a number of script for services, I call them basic user interface and file system. Second step, I get the data still from the bibliography database. I want to list how many books exist by language in a nice pie chart. That's the objective. I get the data from the database. So I define where is the database and I make the select statement. I get the rows, I close the database. I get the rows in uh, an array or a tuple of tuples called data. Next step, I import the data in calc. I have to make here, because bibliography is, does not accept the um, count by uh, aggregate function in SQL, so I have to make a pivot table in, in calc. Um, but I create a new calc sheet completely hidden, so in the background it's not visible for the user. I import the data with the set array statement. I make the pivot table with a number of arguments. The pivot table appears, it's there in the uh, top right corner of, uh, the, of uh, the slide. And I define the chart with a number of uh, characteristics. If the chart type is uh, a pie, the, I uh, request f to have three dimensions and I ask to have the legend available uh, appear appearing also. And finally, I export the file, because I have to do that, to uh, 
any temporary file. I use for that a file system service and a get temp name to, to get just any temporary name at that moment. I export the file and in the dialog, I put that the dialog dot controls and the name of the console is image control dot picture just must contain the name of the file that I just filled in with the with the with the chart. So I have here in less than 20 lines, including commands, I have here just a script that I think is easy to read. It's quite easy to make, easy to test, and that uh, makes something that is okay, an ID, uh, at, uh, an objective that the user had at that moment. I think it's it's important to have so something that it's that makes use, in fact, in the background of many many. Uh, calls to several, uh, you know, uh, items. It's, it's, I think here uh, a proof that it's very concentrated. So we have still for uh, the next future, and so we are still two minutes, and so it's just the end. Uh, a number of uh, topics that we still want to develop in the near future. Uh, also in uh, at the site of the user interface. The, the mainly toolbars, um, a number of services probably also, because surroundings and that kind of things, particularly in basic, is, is, is uh, uh, not, uh, very incomplete. And then in the kind of base and databases, uh, data sheets, we want to know, for instance, if the user has uh, clicks on a row in a data sheet, he must be able to start a script from there and know, knowing where, which row he had selected at that moment, from, for instance, a typical example. And there are a number of crude operations on, on database uh, aspects. Okay, thank you. And so I'm here the representative of a number of people who work together to produce what uh, I explained today. If, thank you. Okay, <laughs> fine. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, do you normally get a request from users saying, oh, could you please implement this in a script, sp script force? And, and how often? You have a Telegram group where we uh, uh, meet together. So we discuss constantly when we want to plan, when we, we are planning something new, we work together to define what we will do and with, uh, which priorities. But if, of course, if you have requests, if you concretely want uh, to see new things appearing in the, in the libraries, it's uh, certainly possible and uh, can discuss that, yeah. Excuse me, is the question, um, do we know which end users use ScriptForge and that kind of things? No, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> there are no means to, to identify what, what they are really doing. Um, uh, we had feedbacks uh, other ways, but uh, number of people, that kind of things, we have no idea. Um, but if there are, there are channels to express their wishes for having new things, yes. 